Hello everyone, my name is Nadra Muhammad Pazli and my CU ID number is 9057632. In this video, I'll be showing a demo of my 304 CEM Web API Development Coursework Project where basically for this coursework project, it requires to develop a full-stack cloud-based RESTful Web API application by using a third-party API. For the first part, I'll be showing a demo of the front-end or also known as the client side of my Web API application that I have developed by using my own Heroku app link project that has been provided by Heroku once I had successfully deployed to Heroku. So as you can see here, this is the link provided by Heroku once I had successfully done uh, deployed my project to Heroku. So after done with the first part of showing demo for the front end, I'll be explaining the back end or so-called server side of my web API application project. So let's start the demo now. Here is my CMovieFlix web API application that I have developed for this coursework project where basically it has been using only a single third-party API which is I got it from the movie database API. This CMovieFlix web API application allows users to search for the desired movie by searching using any keyword or even search the movie by using movie general. Other than that, this CMovieFlix also lets the user to read the details information of those selected movie by the user and the user also will be able to add the selected movie to their favorite movie list as well as to remove or delete any of the movie that the user don't want it to be in the favorite movie list. So here is the landing page or so-called home page of the C Movie Flix. As you can see, here is the carousel where it displays only those popular movie with the title and the overview of the movie. Here is a search bar where it allows user to search movie by using a keywords. So let's say if the user enter ID, here it will be given a result of all movie that has been using IT in their title as a keyword. Okay, so as you can see, all got IT, 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 and IT. So once the user click the select the movie, which is for example this one. It will be pop up a box that display detailed information of the movie where as you can see it got the title of the movie, movie rating, overview of the movie as well as the movie poster. Beside it also got add to favorite button and also close button. So what will happen once the user click add to favorite button? Once the user click add to favorite button, it will be pop up a message where it says you need to log in first, which means user will not be allowed to add the movie to their favorite movie list if they haven't signed in yet or logged in yet to their account or if the user haven't got any account with Simulflix, they are not allowed to do so. So in order to add to favorite of their favorite movie in their favorite movie list, the user will need to have an account with Simulflix and sign in first. So close it. Next, if the user click at the favorite movie here at the navigation bar, it will be pop up a message where it got say, fail to get information of the movie, you need to log in first. So which means the user will need to have an account or log in first to the C movie flix before they allow to view the favorite movie list page as well as to add favorite movie to the favorite movie list. So once they close, it will be directly linked to sign in page where the user can click here, register with C movie now, and they will be linked to the sign up page. So this is a sign up page and for those users that haven't have any account yet with C Movie Flix, they can simply click at sign up and just register themselves over here. So now I will quickly register a new account for the demo purpose. So I will be using this name. Actually here it will be also checking for the email whether it is valid or not. It will basically it will check for validation. So let's say I enter this one with a complete email. Let's see what happened. See, it will give an error message with email is invalid. So we must enter a right one. So here, enter the password. 
For the password also, it will check for validation and check whether the first password is matched or not for, with the second confirmation password. So let's say if I put a wrong password for the second one, for this one, and see what error message that we will got. Okay, password must match. So this time I enter the right password. So Submit. Once the user has been successfully registered with CMovie Flix, it will be directly linked to the sign-in page, this one, and the user will be need to enter the email and password that they have been registered earlier. Alright, before I go to the next step, which is sign in with the CMovie Flix account using an email and password that has been successfully registered earlier, I will first open the MongoDB Atlas just to show the database of my collections where it has been successfully stored the user details that has been entered in the registration earlier. So let's open the MongoDB Atlas. As you can see here, where it shows the user testing at gmail.com, which is the email of the user that has been registered earlier, where the one that I register, okay, and it also recorded the name, which is correct, the user. So basically, it has been successfully stored in my database collection of users data under CMovieFreaks DB database. So this got two because this is the other user ID or user data that I have been using for testing purpose and this is the one that I have been using for the demo purpose. So back to the sign-in page, we'll be using this one. Okay, log in. So now the user has been successfully logged into the CMovieFlix account. So now I will demo again those features and functions that cannot be used earlier by the user when they haven't logged in yet to the CMovieFlix or when they have not yet have an account with CMovieFlix. So as you can see here is again, here is the carousel, as I mentioned earlier, where it will display those popular movie with the titles and also overview of the movie. So now, as you can see, the carousel over here will be display all the popular movie with the title and overview without fail, even if the user search any movie over here. Okay, for example, like, I think so. Okay, it will show the results of the movie that has been searched and also will not stop displaying all those popular movies in the carousel. This is because it has been using a synchronous request where it will always display the popular movie to the user in the carousel without being blocked to the other features such as this one, as I stated earlier. So basically, it allows user to do different uh, activities while in the same page okay beside that if the user open another new tab browser of the same movie flex and search for the other movie which is not the same as the movie that has been searched here in the first step in the current tab okay it will also give a uh, results of the different movie because the JavaScript engine won't block the browser to do so. I will demo it later, but first I will go in, go on first with the features over here. Okay. Now, to test out the functionality of this search bar, where you can get the movie or not, let's try to search for a movie by using this search bar and enter a movie title keyword such as mission, where actually I'm looking for a movie of Mission Impossible. So let's see what's the result we got here. So here it got show all the results of movie that have a mission keywords in their movie title. Okay. So just now I was looking for Mission Impossible, right? So this is the one. 
for example i have selected and again i click at the movie it will be pop up a box that will be display um title of the movie mission impossible fallout movie rating the overview of the movie as well as the movie poster inside as mentioned earlier it also got the add to favorite button where the user can add to the favorite movie list all right again to test out the functionality of the asynchronous let's just maintain the movie result at the first step here and now we try to open another second tab okay i already opened over here so um i'll be using um this search bar and search for a movie of avengers okay the result over here so now we already have two different tab okay as you can see here the first one and this is the second one so that's as you can see i if i click here the end game it will be showing this for the second tab so for the first tab it won't be um disturbed and maintained as this movie of info uh this movie of mission impossible fallout so which means that showed that the asynchronous is a function well as it don't disturb the user to search for the other title movie even if using new tab or a different tab and as i stated earlier it also maintain the current existing movie search results over here So now I'll be choosing one movie of the Invisible Man and once I click here it will be pop up a box that contain all of the details about the movie okay the title of the movie movie rating and overview and so on as what I have been show earlier okay let's say if the user would like to add this movie to their favorite movie list so the user will have to click add to favorite button over here and it will be pop up a message where it say your new favorite movie has been added okay which means user has been successfully added this movie to their favorite movie list so close i'll close here also so the other way that the user can add the movie to their favorite movie list without being click at the movie and see all the details of the movie they can just click here add to favorite which it will be also be added to the favorite movie list let's say i want to test out that button over here i will just choose this relic movie and click add to favorite button see it will also say your new favorite movie has been added so close other than that we will be also adding another one movie of avengers using the second tab which is avengers just now that i have been tested for the asynchronous so here i'll be adding add to favorite click here it also shows the pop-up message of your new favorite movie has been added so let's see whether there are three movies in my favorite movie list or not so let's go back to the first tab okay to check whether three movies just now that i added to my favorite movie list whether it's successfully been added or not will be click at here favorite movie and it will be directly go to the favorite movie pages and voila there are already three movie over here that has been stored including avengers endgame where we has been added from the second tab just now so now we got three movie in my favorite movie list 
Next, I'll be showing the database collection in my MongoDB for the purpose to show that the movie, these three movies are really has been successfully stored in the database collections of user favorite movies database. So now I'll be open the MongoDB Atlas and check for it. Okay. This one is my user favorite movies, which is the database collection names. Okay. As you can see, right now there are currently six existing movies that has been stored in my database collection. This is because these three movies has been added by different user account with ending of EA. As you can see, user from from the user with ID account of EA, EA and EA. Let's check who's belong to this favorite movie. Okay, here as you can see, this EA is from the name of the user is the testing one, which is my previous testing account. Okay, just to test. So here is the current user account that I have been using right now to test for the demo purpose. Okay, as you can see, this one have um, null for the token expired. So this one is the current existing and active one. So it have the token expired, okay, over here. So let's go back to the user favorite movies database to check whether this three movie has successfully stored or not. The Invisible Man, Relic, Avengers game. So here it got Invisible Man, Relic, Avengers game. Basically, for this user movie favorite database has been store movie details as, such as movie id from which user movie title and also date when the user has been added to the favorite movie list okay like this one is the date of today so yeah which means it has been successfully stored in the database of user favorite movies collections so let's go back to my favorite movie page so now to show that whether this remove movie function is workable or function well or not i'll be choosing one movie to be removed from this my favorite movie list okay so let's choose relic to remove the movie once i click here remove movie it will not be in this my favorite movie list anymore which means it has gone so to check whether it has been successfully removed um, at the user favorite movies database collection in my mongodb atlas let's check it out so we refresh As you can see, now is 5, just not is 6, right? So, there's no more Relic movies over here. As you can see, it just left Invisible Man and Avengers Endgame for the existing users, which is with ending of 07, okay, just to make it clear, which means it has been successfully deleted or removed from the database here and also in here in the client side okay so now i have done with my first part of showing the demo on the front end or so-called client side of my c movie fleets web api applications so let's continue with back end or server side of the web api applications now i'll first demonstrate my api using a postman where i will show what will happen when the user has requests for a certain thing and see if the user will got the response or not so i'll be showing the result here as well as in my front end of c movie flex web api applications just to see whether it's the same information or not so basically this is to get a 
request so i already put my i link over here this one is for searching a movie so here i've also put the api key and the page of number one which means it will give the results of the searching movies in first page so the query is what's the movie that we are going to search for so let's say i will be searching avengers okay send so here the total results is 47 but there are only a few that will be displayed in page one over here so as you can see this one avengers end game and then this one avengers okay this is all from the for the first page so it also got the ultimate avengers too so let's see whether it got the same uh, response or results or not in my simulifritz web api applications so now in order to test whether it got the same response as the results in postman just now we enter again avengers and click enter so now here is all the results that i got from the movie that i have searched which means i asked for the request and i'll get it so here's the same avengers endgame infinity war avengers okay ultimate avengers 2 just now we got c2 so basically it has been successfully get those response from the request that the user has been made so the other thing that I would like to show using the postman is when the user has been selected one movie, let's say for example, Relic just now, and then the user click the movie and it will be pop up a box of that will be display all the movie information, including the movie title, movie rating, uh, overview of the movie and also the poster of the movie right so i'll be showing here is it it will be get the result or respond from the request um, endpoint of api that we asked for so here i've already insert the link of the movie and this one is to get the movie over here will be put the ID of the movie itself, which is I'll uh, be testing using the Relic movie. So here is the ID of the Relic. Okay, here is the API key that has been entered. So let's send the request. So now, as you can see over here, it shows all the Relic information movie. Okay see the same id relic when it now this is all the overview of the movie so let's see whether it get the same result or not in my c movie flake swap api applications in order to make sure that the selected movie of relic as what has been shown in a uh, postman just now is the same as what will be uh, show in the simulate flex web application that's searched by the user we will see whether it is correct or not the original title and overview of the movie relic so we'll search for relic and here is the relic okay click here and it got shows that it has been displayed the original titles which is relic the same and overview of the relic as well so this is the poster path that has been using to display over here so basically it's the same i have been using a few node.js packages while developing my C movie flex web api application which is as you can see here i have been using antd 
ANTD is basically a for the purpose of design the React and it has been using while developing my project as it provides a high quality components in order to build a rich interactive of user interface. Like just now I've been shown in some part of the coding where I have been import the ANTD. I also has been using Axios because Axios is a promise space of HTTP client basically for the browser and Node.js and it makes things more easier to send asynchronous HTTP which is obviously I have been using asynchronous so in order to send the HTTP request to the REST endpoint then only it will perform the current oper operation so that's why Axios has been involved in the developments of my project Side, I have been using Axios to call a uh, different um, API endpoints. So next is the core JS, Formic, Moment, React, uh, all of these. Okay, which basically the course is a new JS package that provide a express middleware that used to enable course with various kind of options. So CORS is basically stand for Cross Origin Resources Sharing. It's kind of mechanism that allows restricted web page to be requested from another domain, outside domain from which the first resources will serve. Um, the most important part that I have been using is in here, which is the Mongoose. Basically, it's for the database of my Simulifix application where Mongoose is a Node.js framework that let me to assess MongoDB in a kind of object-oriented way. Now I will first show how did I do to let my CMovie Flix application to be connected to my MongoDB database. So basically I have been created a dev.js under config file in the server side okay i've created this one and i have insert the mongo uri which is the secret key from the mongodb where you need to put your own username and password as well as your database name as what you have created so to show it i have been created here see movie flicks and this is my database. Okay, here. See, we will fix DB. See, it's the same here. So, so in my landing page is where I have been um, declare all of the fetch movies um, to get the movie genres search for the movies search discover movie by genres and get the movie details by using those endpoints um, api from the movie database api so basically i have been import the api url and api key from my config as i already saved my my API URL and API key over here. So as you can see, this is my server routes. So it is in API users over here. Okay, and this one I have been declared my API URL of the movie. This is the link of the URL API, the front one, so that it will be able to use um, in other file by just um, enter this by just key in this api url instead of writing it in full so this is my api key that i have been obtained by the movie database api and this is where i also define the variable to get an image from the movie database api which is this one so close this one so now here I have been um, declared a function uh, for this landing page and 
write all of the constants that I'll be using, like search value results, selected, uh, error, popular result, and general result. So for the first one, this is the coding for the fetch popular movie display. That will be displayed in the carousel part using asynchronous just now. As you can see, cons fetch data as scenes. So it will be using, see, it will call the axios as what I have been declared over here, axios. So await axios. This is API URL that I have been mentioned earlier. This one, it will just be called this one, import to here. We have, I have been imported here, so it will just need this one and then just key in the movie popular because we want to fetch the popular movie. And here is the API key, same things as API URL, language English US. So once it has been set popular result, it will be getting the result of the data from the popular movie. So it will fetch the data. Same goes to the genres where it will be display all of the genres, um, movie genres like action, crime, comedy, thriller as what has been shown in the Simulaflix web API front end just now. So this is the code for a search movie. Okay, if you can see this, if enter search movie and the search value it will give the data and for the results so this is for search discover movie by general once when the user has clicked the general let's say for example action just now and then it will be fetch all of the movie with an action is on the ID, then will be give the results for this search by general. This is to handle the input value, which let the user to key in the keywords of the movie. This one is to get the movie details once the user has been clicked or selected a certain movie to, in order for them to know the details about the movie. So it will be show the movie details based on their ID as what I have been shown in Postman earlier and also in the CMovieFlix uh, front end. So this function is to close the movie details just now. So here is the favorite.js which is basically the schema of the favorite movie that has been placed in the under the model schema in the server side. So here I have been declared cons mongoose, require mongoose, con schema, and then I've been declared this favorite schema. And this is the detail that is stored in the favorite. And this timestamp is for the current created of date and time from the user. Uh, for when is the user has been added the movie to their favorite list. So this is the I'll be stored in the user favorite movie collection database in the MongoDB Atlas. So what it will be stored is the user from user from is um, it will be given the ID for the user different user that log into the or register to the accounts of CMovieFlix will have a different ID while here is for the users to obtain the user's data once they have been registered with CMovieFlix okay this one I have been used a con JWT required JSON web token where each of the user will be given a web token and also it will be getting a token expired where okay each of the user will be having a different token once they uh, register with the CMovieFlix. Alright 
as stated earlier, I have been using the third party API from the movie database API and that is how I obtain all of the movie details, movie um, poster, title and how can I search for a movie and how can I get the movie from the carousel and so on. So here is the link of the movie, the movie database API where you will need to sign up and have a account with them first in order for you to get the API key and then only you can use your API key. So we will go to the API documentations here. Movie Database API has been provided a various kinds of API endpoint which is it has got a lot over here as you can see and I have been using for my CMovie Flix applications. For the reflection part of this 304 c and Web API development Password project. Basically, I have been successfully developed this full stack cloud based source full of CMovie Flix web API application by using a single third party and utilizing the MongoDB to store, retrieve, and also delete data from the database. As what it has been uh, required for me to complete the web API development password project. Even though the outcome of the project is pretty simple, but it is still workable. I couldn't spend so much time in developing this web API application as because I spent so much time and prioritizing the writing thesis of my final project. So for sure, if I had a few more months in order for me to do better in developing this Simulvi Flex web API application, for sure the outcome of this web API will be way much better than the existing one. So there are a few issues that I have been facing during the development of this web API application project where the first core issue that I have been facing earlier is on how to make it my project to successfully deploy into Heroku. Honestly, I have been trying to deploy it to Heroku for almost 12 times and the result that I got is all failed due to various kinds of um, error that has been shown in the Heroku logs tail errors. So after I have done a few um, debugs by checking each lines of the errors that I have got, then finally, finally I have been successfully deployed to Heroku. So Overall, I'm so thankful for this opportunity of being able to learn the subject of 304 c and Web API development as it has given me an experience to develop my own full stack or main stack of Web API application where basically it involved me to do the front and back end of the CMovie Flakes Web API applications. Thank you very much.